subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi kurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 15th of March. Over 22,500 Indians brought back from war torn Ukraine, says Foreign Minister Jay Shankar. India says reviewing procedures after accidental missile launch into Pakistan, Islamabad rejects statement. And Pakistan's opposition calls entire nation to join anti-government rally on March 23rd. And now for all the details, India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday told the parliament that over 22,500 Indians have been brought back safely from war-torn Ukraine as part of evacuation mission Operation Ganga, despite serious challenges amid the Russian invasion that has now entered the 20th day. He said even while India was participating in global deliberations over the evolving situation, the pressing challenge was to ensure Indian citizens were not in harm's way. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday informed the parliament that over 22,500 Indians have been brought back safely from Ukraine despite serious challenges amid the Russian invasion of the European country. Jay Shankar said the government's evacuation mission Operation Ganga was launched on February 24 at a time when airstrikes and shelling were underway. Four Indian ministers also reached Ukraine's bordering countries to better coordinate the efforts to bring back Indians in special flights, while Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself reviewed the situation through daily meetings. The foreign minister said even while India was participating in global deliberations of the evolving situation at the UNSC, the pressing challenge was to ensure Indian citizens were not in harm's way. Despite the challenges posed by the serious ongoing conflict, we have ensured that about 22,500 citizens have returned home safely. At least one Indian student was killed in shelling in Ukraine's Kharkiv city earlier this month. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi last week called Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky separately and urged them to hold direct talks. He also expressed hope that the ongoing negotiations between the warring sides will lead to cessation of violence. And India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh addressed the parliament over the accidental firing of missile that landed in Pakistan on March 9th. He expressed a regret and said New Delhi has ordered a court of inquiry into the incident. Pakistan, in response, rejected that statement. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said he had written to the UN Security Council on the matter and asked the international community to take the matter up. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh told Parliament on Tuesday that New Delhi is conducting a review of its standing operating procedures for operations, maintenance and inspection of weapons systems after accidentally launching a missile into Pakistan last week. India accidentally released a missile which landed in Pakistan around 7 p.m. last Wednesday during routine maintenance and inspection, he said. While this incident is regretted, we are relieved that nobody was hurt due to the accident, Singh said. We give our weapon system to safety and security. In this regard, if there is any harm that comes from any kind of harm, it will be removed immediately. I want to make a decision that our missile system is very secure and secure. In this regard, our safety procedures और प्रोटोकॉल्स उच्च स्तरीय हैं और समय समय पर इसकी समीक्षा भी की जाती है। Although tensions between India and Pakistan have calmed in recent months, military experts have previously warned of the risk of accidents or miscalculations by the nuclear armed arch rivals which have fought three wars. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said on Tuesday, Islamabad rejected Indian Defence Minister's statement. Qureshi told journalists he had written to the UN Security Council on the matter and asked the international community to take the matter up. 
An Indian court on Tuesday upheld a ban on wearing of the traditional Muslim head covering hijab in classes in the southern state of Karnataka that sparked a widespread protest last month by some Muslim students. The court said the government had the power to prescribe uniform guidelines dismissing various petitions challenging the order. The High Court in India's Karnataka on Tuesday upheld a ban on wearing of the traditional Muslim scarf hijab in classes in the southern state, a ruling that could set a precedent for the rest of the country which has a big Muslim minority. The ban by the southern state had sparked widespread protests last month by some Muslim students and parents and counter-protests by Hindu students. Chief Justice Ritu Rajavasti said, we are of the considered opinion that the wearing of the hijab does not form a part of essential religious practice in Islam. The government had the power to prescribe uniform guidelines, he said, as the court dismissed various petitions challenging the order. Institutional discipline prevails over individual choice. Thirdly, about the government order, the stand of the state wherein it stated said that it would not interfere in these matters and it would leave it to the concerned institution. That was sought to be criticized by saying that there, it resulted in non-application of mind, it resulted in discrimination, etc. That has also been negative. And in all the Supreme Court, the High Court has rejected all the petitions. Students who had challenged the ban in court had argued that wearing the hijab was a fundamental right guaranteed under India's constitution. Currently, there is no central law or rule on school uniforms across the country. But the Karnataka ruling could prompt more states to issue such guidelines. And amid the political turmoil over the no-confidence motion against Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, Opposition Alliance Chief Molana Fazlur Rahman has urged the people to join the anti-government long march towards Islamabad on March 23rd. The ruling PTI party has also announced a Mammoth public meeting in the national capital on March 27th, ahead of the no-confidence vote in the parliament. <laughs> Molana Fazlur Rahman, the president of multi-party opposition alliance PDM, the Pakistan Democratic Movement on Monday called on the entire nation to march towards the federal capital on March 23 for an anti-government long march. This comes as the opposition has submitted a no-confidence motion in the National Assembly accusing PM Imran Khan of mismanaging the economy and poor governance in the toughest challenge he has faced since taking power in 2018. The PDM chief said the opposition's no-confidence motion against the Premier was in line with the expectations and the hopes of Pakistani people. The ruling PTI-led coalition has a total of 179 members in the National Assembly, while the opposition claims to have the support of 162 members. <laughs> شہرائے دستور پر تاریخ کا عظیم الشان مظاہرہ ہوگا پارلیمنٹ کے تمام عراقین کو بحفاظت ایوان تک پہنچنے اور اپنا ووٹ استعمال کرنے کا مکمل کور مہیا کیا جائے گا Amid rising political temperature, the ruling PTI party has also announced a mammoth public meeting at Democracy Chowk in Islamabad on March 27, after which the voting on the no confidence will take place, PTI Senator Faisal Javid Khan informed. The government has exuded confidence to defeat the no trust motion. And more news from Pakistan, scores of locals and political activists held a protest in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, recently over failure of law enforcement authorities to curb rising street crimes. The protesters said the country's deteriorating economic crisis is also forcing people to resort to crimes. Locals and political activists led by the leaders of opposition Jamaat Islami party recently took to the streets to protest against the rising street crimes in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi. Protesters claimed failure of the police, government and the judicial system, highlighting that criminals now rob people in broad daylight and kill whomever they wish to. Although paramilitary rangers are also deployed at the city's police stations, activists claim there has been no noticeable difference in Karachi's crime rates. Our children, our 
रोज उनसे छीना झपटी हो रही है और डाकुओं को अब इतनी खुली छूट मिली हुई है कि वो जिसको चाहते हैं गोली मार देते हैं Active is also blamed the country's deteriorating economic crisis is forcing people to resort to unwanted crimes. Pakistan has been grappling with historical currency devaluation, record high inflation and current account deficit which has put Prime Minister Imran Khan under increasing pressure. An art and handicraft exhibition has opened in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, during which a variety of calligraphy, paintings and handicraft products will be on display. The event was launched on Sunday to mark the National Day for Protection of Cultural Heritage in the war-torn country with the objective to encourage the Afghan people to protect their culture. More than 100 people visited the exhibition on the first day. Officials from the National Museum said manual skills and fine arts of Afghanistan's contemporary craftsmen are on display. The Milli Kishwar is one of the most important parts of Afghanistan. If anyone in this museum comes and sees the old parts of Afghanistan, he can see the history of the history of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the most important part of Afghanistan. همچنان به خاطر حفظ میراسای کشور هم مسئولیت داره و آن را انشالله به گونه احسن و خوب انجام خواهد داد. An artist in Central India have devised an innovative way to recycle electronics and automobile metal scraps by transforming them into attractive and beautiful sculptures. The objective is creating awareness about ecology and the need for reuse and recycle. Artist Amit Sinha from Central India's Jabalpur has been upcycling metal waste into beautiful installations for several years now. A painter by profession, Amit got into scrap metal art after being inspired from his father who is a welder. He gets an idea and then begins to work on figuring out the different ways to create striking sculptures from discarded metal parts. फिर गुरंदी जैसे घूमते ही गया तो बहुत सारी चीज़ें मुझे दिखती गई और जितने भी कबार वहाँ फेंकते थे मैं डेली देखता था और डेली जाता था स्क्रैप के जो गोडाउन वहाँ पे रहते थे तो उसमें मैं फॉर्म्स ढूंढता था हमेशा कि इसमें मुझे क्या दिख रहा है और धीरे धीरे करके कंटिन्यू करते गया उस चीज़ को पहले तो एक शौक था मेरा फिर बाद में मैंने उसको अपने प्रोफेशन में डेवलप कर लिया वंशिका राठौर इज अनादर बडिंग आर्टिस्ट फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश जबलपुर A student of fine arts, Vanshika began scrap metal art journey during the COVID-19 pandemic two years ago. She perfected her art during these years and now has her art installed in parks, government offices and even get private orders. She says so far she has made 70 structures and has done 20 installations. मैं जब कोविड से घर में आई थी तो एक आर्टिस्ट है ना कि कुछ ना कुछ करना चाहिए तो मुझे हल्का सा डिप्रेसिंग टाइप लग रहा था कि हम एकदम से सब सब चीज से अलग हो गए तो हमारे घर में जो मटेरियल था पहले मैंने उससे ट्राई किया वंशिका सेस इन एन एफर टू कंजर्व द एनवायरनमेंट शी आल्सो रिसाइकल्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट्स इनटू एट्रैक्टिव स्कल्पचर्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इज फास्ट बिकमिंग अ न्यू बिजनेस ट्रेंड दैट इंक्लूड्स द रीयूजिंग और रिफर्बिशिंग ऑफ डिस्कार्डेड सरप्लस एब्सोल्यूट और ब्रोकन डिवाइसेस Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Over 22,500 Indians brought back from war torn Ukraine, says Foreign Minister Jay Shankar. India says reviewing procedures after accidental missile launch into Pakistan, Islamabad rejects statement. And Pakistan's opposition calls entire nation to join anti-government rally on March 23rd. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.